Oh, I do? Okay. Can you hear me now? Okay. Okay, Psalm 71, uh, verse 9 through 18. I wish I had a page number for you. I don't know what uh, translation you have. I, I use a Holman. Uh, I'm, you probably have a new King James here, right? Or whatever version, but you'll get the gist of the, of the verses. So it starts with verse 9. Don't discard me in my old age. As my strength fails, do not abandon me. For my enemies talk about me, and those who spy on me plot together, saying, God has abandoned him. Chase him and catch him, for is, there is no one to rescue him. God, do not be far from me. My God, hurry to help me. May my adversaries be disgraced and destroyed. May those who seek my harm be covered with disgrace and humiliation. But I will hope continually and will praise you more and more. My mouth will tell about your righteousness and your salvation all day long, though I cannot sum them up. I come because of the mighty acts of the Lord God. I will proclaim your righteousness, yours alone. God, you have taught me from my youth, and I still proclaim your wonderful works. Even when I am old and gray, God, do not abandon me. Then I will proclaim your power to another generation, your strength to all who are to come. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his word. Uh, I feel like there's a very powerful message there for all of us. Uh, I don't think any of us are getting any younger. Uh, we still got lots of things to do. God still has a plan for us. How many of you here have ever heard of Charles Haddon Spurgeon? By the time he was 20 years old, he had already preached more than 600 sermons at the age of 20. He lived in England in the 1800s, and he preached to one of the largest churches at that time. Um, imagine a church that held more than 10,000 people at one, at one time. Uh, in that age, he did it without the aid of a microphone, and he did it to a ripe old age. He also preached on Isaiah 46.4, and I felt compelled to use some of his notes to expound this message. Even to your old age, I am he, and even to my gray hairs I will carry you. I have made and I will bear. Even I will carry and will deliver you from Isaiah 46.4. God's going to take care of us. I know in this world there's... So many things that are going wrong. We look around, as Steve mentioned in his prayer, you know. Sometimes it's very discouraging to turn on the TV or the Internet or whatever and hear all the bad things that are going on. But we have to remember that God's still in control. He's still the one that's making everything. He has that plan. Uh, and he will cause things to work together for good, no matter what, according to Romans 8.28. Uh, he's, he's got a plan for us. He's got a plan for the whole world. Uh, and we just have to, what was that song, trust and obey? We just trust and obey. Just keep going on, doing what he has. We all joke about our age and our aches and our pains, um, and that goes along with getting older. And, but the fact remains that we are getting older. Um, and our congregations are growing smaller. I don't know how, how this... Well, I look here and I see that there's not quite as many people here as there was a year ago, it looks like. Um, I know it's summer. I know a lot of people are out doing other things and vacations and all that that comes into play. But... I think overall, I, I look around all of Franklin County and I see smaller and smaller congregations. I know my home church in, in Turners Falls. Um, we're lucky to have 20, 24 people on, on a Sunday. And the thing with that is there's not a lot of young people coming. Uh, it seems like the, the latest uh, uh, generations not, not having that same desire to be in the church uh, which to me is sad, uh, but 
There is a remnant. <laughs> we, we can count on that, that God's still got a remnant, and he's still going to, to provide. Um, according to Isaiah, uh, God remains constant in his nature, kindness, and grace, even to our old age. He will carry and deliver us. We are here but for a vapor, a short time. Uh, here one moment and gone the next. I know it seems like forever sometimes. That, Lord, when are you going to get me out of here? You know, but it's still a short time. Uh, but he takes care of us and he has a plan for us. And God's mercies are always the same from generation to generation. And God's strength is not diminished by our aging. Even though we may be getting weaker and weaker, God's not. He's constant. He's always strong. And he's also put us where he wants us. Um, like I say, I'm up here in New England. I was born and raised in Texas. Um, lived all over Southeast Asia for about six years. Uh, lived in Florida for 20 years. But since 1998, I've been here. And I don't know how much longer I'm going to be here, but that God knows, and he'll, he'll figure that all out. But he puts us in places. He has stuff for us to do when he puts us those places. Um, you may think that God's not got anything for you to do, but that would be wrong. He has plans for you. He has a way to use you. Uh, Does he want you to volunteer in some charitable organization? Maybe. Does he want you to help spread his word? Maybe. He has a plan. Whatever it may be, he's got a use for you. You're not unusable. God can take and use us, shape us. It doesn't matter what we are, who we are, where we are. God has got a reason for that. And we just have to do that thing again, trust and obey. Uh, Lord, what would you have me to do? Uh, I, I suggest that you take the time to, to go back to your first love, as that song said. Uh, and we get caught up. We don't have time to read the Bible. We don't have time to, uh, to pray like we think we should. Um, you're planning on doing something, and then the next thing you know, uh, something else comes up and you're you're distracted and you go off this way or that way. I used to I used to be on the internet uh, when I first started writing music. You know I thought this is what God wanted me to do. He wanted me to put my songs out for people to hear. And I would spend so much time on the internet trying to spread my songs that I would go in and sit down and say, okay, I'm going to work on the internet for 20, 30 minutes and then I'm going to do my uh, some writing or whatever it may be. And three or four hours later, I'd find that I didn't hadn't done any writing. I'd just been on the Internet doing nothing, getting nowhere. So you won't find much of my stuff on the Internet anymore. Um, I quit it. Um, I'm one of these, um, I, don't, I don't have email. I don't have a cell phone. Um, I'm just... Out there now, some of my music is on the internet, but I put that out a long time ago. And if you want to look it up, you can probably find it. But I'm not going to uh, promote it because that's that's what, that's for God to do. Mine is to just keep following what He's laid out for me. Working with the Gideons has been the greatest blessing of my life. This organization, I don't know. Most of you probably know about the Gideons. Uh, I've spoken here before. Uh, you know that. Uh, we were formed in the early, late 1890s, and since that time, we've uh, grown to a worldwide organization. We put out, at this point, about 2.7 billion Bibles around the world. You think, oh, we got it all done, but we haven't. There's still people everywhere that don't know who Jesus is. There's people that do still do not have a Bible. And I know here in America we find that hard to believe because I could probably go into any one of your houses and find three or four copies of the Bible, maybe even just in one room. Uh, we've got Bibles all over the place, but there are places in the world that they don't have them. There's no word of God in those places. Um, a few years ago we had the privilege of seeing a... Uh, a uh, 
distribution, we we'll call it, of Bibles in China. And in China, you, we can't do it the way we would normally do it, going in and saying, would you like a copy of God's Word? We can't do that. However, we can find a, a local evangelical pastor and we can give him a box with about 100 Bibles in it in Chinese. And he takes that into his church. And when he gets into that church, uh, they videotape one of, one of those occasions. And I don't know, you ever seen children at Christmas time when the, they're getting ready to open their gifts, the anticipation, and then when they get it, the joy on their faces when they receive whatever gift it is. They're so happy. We were able to watch Chinese men and women and children get their first Bible for the first time. And the elation, the joy that was going on, and you just felt it. It was palpable. Everybody knew that they were, they were getting the Word of God for the very first time. And people were saved by it. That's how we work. We, we do whatever needs to be done. Last year we went to UMass. Uh, and we're going to do it again this year uh, in September, first week. Uh, we'll go on a Wednesday. And last year we passed out 3,400 plus Bibles in one day. And that's, that's pretty good. Uh, but that was God. Once again, that was God's doing, not ours. Because we got the jeers, we got the harassment. And uh, I can assure you that when we go and do it this September, we're going to encounter the same thing. But it doesn't matter. It's not, I think uh, Jesus said, it's not you that they're harassing, it's me. And speaking of himself. you know. So we just have to remember that they're not insulting us, they're insulting God. Um, I looked at I saw the news yesterday about the Olympics and uh, I was never so shocked to find that uh, they mocked the Lord's Supper in their opening ceremonies uh, with I don't I don't know I don't understand it I don't understand why they would do that um, because I thought France was pretty pretty straightforward but uh Evidently, I was wrong. Uh, but those kind of things are going on all over the world. God will not be mocked. Uh, we know that. But getting back to what I'm talking about, um, we, we go out and we, we pass out these Bibles, and we don't know when we pass them out what's going to be the result. Um, we passed, I said, 3,400-something Bibles at UMass last year. Uh, we know that some of them got thrown in the trash. We know that some of them got just put away in the, a dormitory somewhere and then stuck away and nobody will ever read them. But we also know that God has use and he does cause things to happen from that. Uh, some of the, uh, the Russian and Moldovan uh, people that we talk to uh, at the churches up in, in Greenfield, they uh, they tell us that they know when we've been on campus because they work in the hospitality section. They're, they're part of the, the cleanup crews and stuff. And they'll go around and check the trash cans when we've been there and pick up the trash and pick out the Bibles and take them and repurpose them and make sure that they get to somebody. So even though... You know, the guy takes the Bible and says, oh, yeah, throws it away. Somebody's going to pick that Bible up. God's not going to let it go to waste. He never does. He never does. And we've heard testimonies of people being saved by that tossed-out Bible. Um, a little quick sh short story. There was uh, down in, I think it was Kentucky, there was a, an atheist on a college campus and he wanted to, to uh, cause as much trouble for the Christians on the campus as he could. So he decided that he would have a, uh, a little Bible study. And so he, uh, he got all organized and set the date and the time. And he's going to the Bible study and he goes, Oh, I don't have a Bible. Oh no, what am I going to do? And he's walking along and suddenly out of the window comes flying a Gideon's Bible and it almost hit him in the head. He caught it, 
and went, wow. He went to the Bible study, did what he was supposed to do, and got saved that night. Because God knew he needed to be touched. And that Bible, he, uh, I don't know if you ever heard of the Bible app. Uh, the first one, I don't know the name of it or anything, but there was a Bible app. He ended up creating the first Bible app. And uh, as an atheist, you know, talk to Max Lucado, uh, some of these others that uh, uh, have written about it. Uh, Lee Strobel, always wanting to find a reason not to believe, and it ends up they turn out that they do believe. So there's lots of things going on, lots of ways to happen. Um, I want to say that uh, age does sometimes have advantages. Hopefully for most of us we may be a little slower and a little more careful, but we should be a little bit wiser and more aware of the pitfalls that the devil throws at us. We also should have a better understanding of God's word, and I believe that we, uh, we should be capable of mentoring others. Uh, that's another good thing about being in the Gideons. We have that opportunity to talk to people and uh, do some discipleship because it's, it's really not just handing out the word, but it's explaining what the word is. You know, you put the Bible into some people's hands and they get all excited about it. And then a little bit later, they forget about it. But if you take and you mentor them, disciple them, uh, you, you're doing God's work. So I don't know what God's got planned for you, how he's going to use you, uh, but he will. He will. He has a plan. We go to the jails. We go to, uh, we're going to go to Franklin County Fair. Uh, we went there last year for the very first time. And I guess i got just a moment here I can tell you about that. Um, about three or four years ago, my, uh, my granddaughter was in a horrendous car wreck. And uh, the driver was killed, thrown from the vehicle and killed. Uh, she was crushed up against the, the roof of the car, and her scalp was uh, crushed in and pushed back to where her brain was exposed. The first person on the scene happened to be a pastor. Now, my, daughter, my granddaughter was not a Christian. Oh, she knew about Christ, and we had talked to her many times, but she had never accepted the Lord. <coughs> and that, that morning, he was, uh, this pastor was the first to, uh, to be there and to, to help her and to watch over her, uh, prayed over her. His wife was also a nurse, and she was right there, and she survived. And she knows that it was because of Jesus that she did. She came to accept the Lord. Well, that pastor was a pastor at the, uh, in South Deerfield at uh, Valley Life Assembly of God. And as Gideons, we'd been trying to get in there and speak to them, but I'd never been able to make a connection with them. Well, because of my granddaughter and the situation that happened there, I ended up taking her to church so that she could see, meet the pastor. Uh, this is sometime after the accident. And she developed a relationship with him, and I developed a relationship with the pastor. Well, ended up two years ago that I went and spoke there as I'm speaking to you here today. And the pastor said, well, we would like to help the Gideons, but we want to get into Franklin County Fair. Well, we had been trying as Gideons to, to get into the fair and to do a dis, uh, distribution there, but it never seemed to work out. Every time that we tried to get in there, something would come up, and we couldn't make all the arrangements to do it. Well, when he proposed it to me, he said, we want to do it, uh, but we need Bibles. you think the Gideons could provide the Bibles. So long story short, last year we went to the Franklin County Fair and we took 600 Bibles, I think it was, 600, and uh, we distributed 400 and something there at the fair along with the church. And now he's called me up earlier around May and said, we want to do it again with the Gideons do it again. And so this... This fall, uh, in September, we'll be at the Franklin County Fair, 
and we're taking 800 Bibles um, because we feel like that's what God wants us to do. So it, God works these things out. He, he's got his hand in, in everything. And when we think something is really bad, uh, how evil and rough and tough, I thought my granddaughter was dying and this was all going on during COVID. We couldn't see her, couldn't be with her. But God had a plan and he worked it all out and he caused it for good. So it's amazing how God works with us. The one thing I wanted to make sure today that I told you, it's not your ability. It's not how young you are, how energetic you are, how much uh, drive you have, how much you love the Lord, all of that, that helps a lot. But it's availability. It's not ability. If you'll just make yourself available to do something, and I, and I suggest to everyone, I can't tell you that you need to join an organization like the Gideons, although I think it's a good one. Um, we don't, we pay our own way. We don't have a building that we meet in. Uh, the only thing we pay for is our post office box, uh, and we meet in churches. Uh, so if it's like we just go to the t uh, certain churches and they let us come in, and we have our prayer meetings there or we meet in somebody's home. We do not have a, you can't go down the road and say, oh, there's the Gideon's building, because we don't have one anywhere. Uh, we rely on the Lord and God to provide what we need, where we need it, and when we need it. And he does. Uh, it's, I tell the pastors, we're a, what they call a three, three-fold cord. Uh, God the church, and the Gideons in three-strand cord. And we work together, the three of us, to get his word out. We depend upon the churches to support us financially. Um, I'm not telling you that you know you need to dig deep into your pockets, but if the Lord leads you to donate to the Gideons, it would be appreciated. I can tell you that anything that comes to the Gideons, uh, some charities, they... they they spend a lot on uh, things other than what their focus is. We spend a, a lot on our focus and not much on anything else. Uh, and we got Gideons all over the world now. Um, we're in 250-something countries with 202 different languages uh, that we have Bibles in. So we're putting the word out all over the place. And... Uh, we're just uh, depending upon the churches to support us. And uh, this church has been very good to us, and we appreciate it. Uh, I would love to tell Mark how much I thank him for just giving me the opportunity to come here and speak. Um, I wish I had delivered the greatest message you ever heard, but that's not going to happen. <laughs> uh, but Mark... Uh, is a strong supporter of the Gideons, and, I, and we thank him for that. Um, unfortunately, we've lost one of our our strongest Gideons this past uh, back in June. Uh, he he passed away after a long health fight, uh, but we know he's with the Lord. We lost the uh, chaplain at the uh, at the jail. Well, I say lost. We know where they are, but uh, they've they've passed on. Uh, Pastor Millette was a chaplain at the Franklin County Jail for 45 years, uh, and now he's he's in heaven. So, uh, but we continue on. We keep going on, and uh, I don't know how much longer God's going to use me. But as long as He does, I'm going to be I'm going to make myself available, and for whatever, wherever, whenever. And I thank you, Veronica. I thank you for all the assistance today. And with that, I'm going to say good night.